Wah, kamu sih saya ke pasti ya, Shana. Kai. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamualaikum dan salam sejahtera. What we are going to have for our lesson today. So for today, we are we will learn about the enzyme technology. Enzymes technology. Enzymes immobilization. Learning objective for today. Number one, explain the importance and the main techniques of enzyme immobilization, namely absorption, entrapment, and covalent coupling. Number two, explain the application of enzyme immobilization in the development of biosensors. Is enzyme immobilization? Enzyme immobilization is a technique that is used to attach enzymes to an inert, insoluble material. It is in order to stabilize and restrict the movement of enzymes, so the enzyme can be used and reused to carry out an industrial process continuously. Why must enzyme immobilize? Enzymes are unstable which easily can be denatured at temperature 60 degrees Celsius and above and it cannot stand with extreme pH. Example, glucose isomerase enzyme immobilized stable at 65 degrees Celsius almost for a year but denatures within few hours at 45 degrees Celsius for free enzyme. Techniques of enzyme immobilization It either use a physical or chemical substances If use physical substances, the technique called absorption, entrapment and encapsulation Whereas for chemical use the chemical substances The technique is called covalent binding Either use a support or cross-linking Let me check the techniques of enzyme immobilization. Technique involve absorption, entrapment, and covalent coupling. The technique for cross-linking is not included in STPM syllabus. Let me check the technique one by one. Technique number one, absorption. The enzyme molecules are bound to the surface of the medium. Example, cellulose, resin, a membrane by a weak bond such as hydrogen bond or ionic bond. Technique number two, entrapment. In this technique, the enzyme molecules are trapped or encapsulated in porous solid beads. Example, when mix, mix with sodium alginate solution and drip into calcium chloride to form solid calcium alginate beads. So there are two types of entrapment. Either using silica gel lattice or alginate polysaccharide from seaweed or entrapment by encapsulation. Technique number three, covalent coupling. In this technique, the enzyme form covalent bonds, example, the sulfide bond with solid medium such as polymer membrane or cross-linking organic molecules like protein. Procedure for immobilization of enzyme. So the enzyme is bound to the medium with the help of certain mineral ion like calcium ion. Then the beads are loaded into a reactor. In this diagram shows the continual production of product using immobilized enzyme in the industry. Then, the substrate in the form of solution is poured to the top of the reactor or allowed to flow through the enzyme. When the substrate flows through the enzyme, it is 
converted into product. The product flows out continuously as long as the substrate is allowed to flow through the enzyme. The advantages of enzyme immobilization in the manufacturing industry. Number one, immobilized enzyme can be controlled more easily. The enzymes have a longer shelf life or more stable due to the protection by inert support from proteolysis. The enzymes are protected from the thermal denaturation as they vibrate less when immobilized. The enzyme can be reused as they do not get washed out of the reactor. The enzymes are not diluted by the medium like free enzyme. Some enzymes work better as they are naturally attached to the membrane in cells. Then the products are easily purified as they are free from contamination. The system is ideal for continuous process. The enzymes are able to operate at wide pH range than in solution. The system can be much cheaper to use. The disadvantages of immobilized enzyme. Immobilization may alter the shape of the active site of the enzyme. Also, the immobilization may alter the catalytic ability of the enzymes. Enzyme may become detached and so may not function efficiently. So, it might be expensive to immobilize some enzymes, so it may not be cost effective. Technology using immobilized enzyme Biosensing What is a biosensing? This is the technology using immobilized enzyme to detect the presence and to estimate the concentration of certain chemical. Whereas a biosensor is any device that uses the specific biochemical reaction to detect chemical compounds in biological samples. The components of a biosensor There are four components in a biosensor. Number one, it consists of immobilized enzyme or antibody or living cell that is used to react with the chemical such as a glucose that is to be detect. Number two, a transducer that converts the product, for example, gluconic acid or hydrogen peroxide of the reaction that is usually reactive to the electrode to become an electric current. Number three, an amplifier that magnifies the tiny electric current so that it is easier to be processed. Number four, Microelectronic processor that process the electric current so that the chemical concentration becomes a numerical reading shown in a screen. In this, this diagram shown the component of a biosensor that is uh, consists of an line and then it consists of bioreceptor that molecular molecularly recognizing material transducer the signal transducers and also measurable signal that transmit the signal to the electric signal the uses of biosensor in the industry it is included in the manufacturing industry the concentration of raw material and finished product can be monitored by the biosensor Number two, in the agricultural industry, that the concentration of element of mineral ion in the soil can be monitored. Number three, uses of biosensor in industry. In the environmental study, the pollution of toxic substances in the soil, river, air or coastal area can be monitored. Number four, in the medical field, the monitor of chemical in the patient can be done with biosensor. This can be prevent imminent attack of certain diseases or disorder. Biosensors in the future 
there are a research into the miniaturization of biosensor that it can be implanted in the vein and can lead to the development of biochip. So this multi-purpose biochip can be detect many chemicals at the same time. If this biochip are uh, interface with other automatic devices, long distance monitoring and automatic remedies are not impossible in the future. A biosensor to detect urea in blood or urine sample. The reaction between the biological material immobilized enzyme used is urease and the substrate is urea brings about a chemical change. Ammonium ion and the carbon dioxide are produced. Ammonium ion are detected by the transducer and the biochemical signal is converted into electrical signal. Then the signal is amplified and sent to the microelectronic and data processing unit. A measurable signal such as digital display, a printout or a color change is produced. So this diagram shows the biosensor to detect urea in blood. In this component, it consists of substrate for urea and also enzyme immobilized in a gel. And then a transducer and electrical signal will be sent to the amplifier and then amplifier will send the signal to the micro electronic and the data will process and it will be read out in the numerical number let we go to how to monitor the blood glucose level using the biosensor there are two type of biosensor to monitor blood glucose level First is electronic biosensor and second is dipstick biosensor. So electronic glucose biosensor, how it works? First, the biosensor relies on the specificity of enzyme glucose oxidase. Two, glucose present in the blood of or urine sample is converted to gluconic acid and hydrogen peroxide by glucose oxidase. The acid or hydrogen ion produce attract electron. Number four, this is turn produces a measurable small electrical signal. Then the size of electrical signal is proportional to the glucose level in the blood. The biochemical signal is detected by and converted into electrical signal by the transducer. Then the electrical signal is amplified and sent to the microelectronics and data processor. The electrical signal is used to produce a measurable signal, for example, digital display or print out color change. Let's we go to dipstick test. How the dipstick test work? Some glucose biosensor used in a color change to detect glucose in the urine sample. The common use lipstick consists of two enzymes, glucose oxidase and proxidase, and a hydrogen donor immobilized on a strip of cellular fiber. When the strip is dipped into the urine sample, the enzyme glucose oxidase catalyzes the changes, changing of glucose to gluconic acid and hydrogen peroxide. The hydrogen peroxide then reacts with the colorless hydrogen donor to produce a colored compound. The reaction is catalyzed by proxidase. The type and intensity of color indicates the concentration of glucose in the urine sample. The concentration of glucose can be measured quantitative, quantitatively using a colorometer or to estimate the amount of comparison with a color reference, reference card. So, in this uh, picture, show how the dipstick test is work. So, if there are more glucose, the color is become darker. That's all for our lesson for today. I hope this session will be useful for everyone, especially for Form 6 students who are taking biology. Thank you for watching, don't forget to like and subscribe 
and turn on the notification.